For more of our days than we care to admit, we spend our time staring at screens. Maybe for you that means 16 hours a day, or maybe it's just four. Either way, you've landed here because it's more than suits you. We don't recommend you cut down on your Alux watching time because we're here to inspire and educate you. If your screen time is not leaving you happy, fulfilled, and refreshed, but rather feeling guilty, unfulfilled, and just plain tired, well, it's time for a change. So, here's the Aluxer's Guide of 15 Ways to Reduce Screen Time and Live a Happier Life. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Number one, get a clear picture. We're all a little in denial when it comes to how much screen time we actually get in a day. So the first point of call is to get an accurate picture of how much time you actually spend gazing into the blue light. We recommend installing a time tracker on all the main devices you use. There are many free versions to choose from, and most give you a pie chart or a similar at the end of each day, week, and month to show what you actually looked at and for how long. You might be surprised at how much time you spend reading the comments of your favorite channels and how much time you spend doing work-related stuff. Thankfully, the app won't report to your boss. But empowered with this full picture, you are now ready to make a change. Number 2. Face the Hard Facts this one can be hard to hear, but we're here with the truth. You don't actually have to know everything about everything, and you don't have to find it out from the internet. When someone starts to talk about something new, you don't have to automatically launch into a Google search and try to keep up with the competing facts as they converse with you. Leave your phone and listen to the information they're bringing. Instead of asking Google, ask the human in front of you more engaging questions and enjoy learning in real life for a change. Next time you see an interesting video or article, stop yourself before you head down the rabbit hole of finding out everything there is to know about alpacas, like a five-year-old does about dinosaurs. Unless you're moving into alpaca farming, it's not really going to impress your dinner guests if you rattle off a million alpaca facts. Just remember, they have Google too. Information is only important if it's relevant and has context within the discussion. There's no prize for knowing the most facts out of your friends. Number three, stop noticing. Social media's main objective is to keep you on the app. That means the moment they notice you're slowing down or losing interest, they'll hit you with a bell chime or notification to keep your focus back on track. Even after you exit the app, they might still send you notifications to let you know someone commented on your comment about a comment on Paris Hilton's documentary. And try as you might, you can't resist the urge to log on and look. So stop noticing it by switching off your notification settings. You have to do this for each app and also each device you own. Instead of scrolling in the checkout line, do a few apps every time. Go to settings, notifications, uncheck all the boxes or click the one that undoes the notifications that you can live without for now and press save. Then go on and live your life. Number four, log off or log out. Another novel idea is to log off when you're done on social media sites or apps. If you have to spend time logging back in, you're making it one step harder to just click and scroll. You could even go a step further and change your password to something complicated and then click no to auto logins and login saver prompts, making time wasting less convenient for yourself. Number five, unsubscribe. Like writing a to-do list and crossing off the tasks you've completed, unsubscribing from newsletters, mailing lists, apps, and other subscriptions is completely addictive. Give yourself an ego boost, pour a glass of wine, put on some good music, and give yourself a candlelit evening unsubscribing from all those annoying emails that clog up your morning inbox. By now, you'll feel like you've lost 10 pounds. Then take a look at your phone or tablet. Uninstall all those apps you hate, the ones that send you spam ads or notifications you never look at. Then exit all the lousy WhatsApp chats you never respond to and just clog your phone with bad memes. This is the equivalent of going down a pant size for the ego. Now, if you want to end on a complete climax, update your antivirus settings to stop sending you notifications for updates. You're welcome. Number six, make a date with your screen. 
Take a look at your schedule, then slot a few sessions of screen time. Make Monday night your time to catch up on a series, or Sunday is movie night. If you take a train to work, let that be your social media scroll, or let yourself have 20 minutes at lunch to watch some YouTube. If you go cold turkey with yourself, you might not cope. Try to stick to screen activity that brings you real joy and relaxation or entertains you. Avoid anything that gets you negatively worked up or makes you feel tense or depressed. Ain't nobody got time for that. Number 7. Reach Out IRL if we're honest with ourselves, we scroll because we are bored or lonely or feeling disconnected. Sadly, scrolling seldom heals those feelings. Help yourself to need scrolling less by connecting with people more in real life. When you're really connected, you won't feel disconnected. Do something you enjoy. If you're enjoying yourself, you won't easily get bored. And if you're building into relationships, you're less likely to feel lonely. Number 8. Prioritize everything else. Can you remember what it was like to get to work and drink your coffee away from your desk? Why not delay jumping into your emails and catch up with your colleague or boss face to face? Sounds crazy, right? We know, but bear with us. You could also sit down in the staff kitchen or mosey on up to a work friend and chat as opposed to IMing them. Let non-screen moments become your priority. Instead of promising your kids another episode of iCarly if they behave, promise them a game of Snap with you. It's great for you and the kids. Look through your schedule and see how you can make a few more concrete plans during times you know you can fall back on your bed and just lose three hours of your life between phone apps. While you're finding your phone less, you might need to help yourself break the habit with some distractions. Number 9. Read Books we're all becoming aware of how skewed and personalized the information we all receive from the internet is. It's like the internet is a first grade teacher and doesn't want to tell you that you're just plain wrong sometimes. If you don't want to be stuck in the echo chamber forever, then why not go into a library or a bookstore and pick a book you've never heard of, something that no one has recommended to you, one that isn't on a top 10 shelf of a window promotion. You might just be surprised at the completely other opinion it reveals, and you can try it on for size without anyone even tracking you. Number 10. Reduce the screens in your life. Go through your house and office and count how many screens you have. Do you need a laptop, TV, projector, PC, tablet, e-reader, smartphone, Xbox, and smartwatch, really? Or are you just enabling it to be easier to flick on a screen? The more screens are away from arm's reach, the less likely you are to lean over and lose hours at a time. Number 11. Add more unscreen hobbies to your life. Hey Luxers, it's time to stop watching fish tank build videos and go out and get your own fish tank started. There's no rule that says you don't qualify for a fish tank until you know everything there is to know about the hobby. Unscreen yourself and get into it with both hands. Chat to the guy at the model building shop if you aren't sure. Join a running club if you want to improve your running time. And get in the ocean if you want to learn how to surf. Because you're not into gardening until you put your first plant in the ground. Number 12. Be Upset IRL We're a generation of keyboard activists. The best definition we could find for this on the Urban Dictionary is people who, instead of doing something proactive about what they perceive to be an issue, whine, posting passive-aggressive shit and long, boring texts with faulty logic all over the internet. Instead of getting angry and hammering away at keyboards while you eat instant ramen and develop high blood pressure, why not get upset about something in real life instead? If there's a litter problem in your area, why don't you try resolving it with your neighbors? Or instead of posting a nonsensical Facebook post next time a colleague eats your lunch, approach them directly and ask them not to. When you're a real activist, you won't need to stir the pot much online. Number 13. Appreciate a different pace. As you start to wean off the screen, you're going to notice one big difference. You slow down the information flow. You'll quickly realize it's okay to not know everything about everything. In fact, it gives you a great reason to converse with other people as they fill you in on something interesting that they saw online while you were out playing tennis. Don't ever fear that you won't find anything out, but you will slow down the constant flow of information and the important stuff will come through to you. While you will miss the gender reveal of the fourth child of the girl who sat next to you in geography class in grade 7, you'll just have to find a way to deal with that kind of disappointment. Number 14. 
free your mind with meditation. When you're feeling antsy and having the addiction sweats of going for a walk in the park without taking your phone, instead of running home and screaming, take a minute to sit still with your mind. Take your awareness through each part of your body from head to toe and spend some time exploring your thoughts as they swirl in your head. It's a fantastic feeling to just observe yourself and your thoughts without judgment. The more you enjoy spending time with yourself, the less you'll need the screen to comfort you. If you want to know some more about meditation and mastering your mind, why not try our course on the subject, Mind Mastery? You can sign up yourself today at alux.com slash mindmastery. Number 15. Keep Focus Make real people your real focus in life. The more time you spend doing real things in real time, the more you'll feel disconnected from devices. The disappointment we feel from past news or future expectations can occupy our entire present. In the end, we spend our lives living in what was and what might be, rather than what is. Meditation and mindfulness will help you, but every minute is also easier to give your undivided attention to so you can enjoy the beautiful now. Don't treat it like a second thought. So Aluxers, what are you most afraid will happen if you put down the screen? Be honest and let us know in the comments. Now, since you stuck with us until the end, we do have a bonus for you. Ever wonder how much more you eat on a day with lots of screen time versus not so much screen time? According to psychiatry dietitian Dr. Susan Albers, we tend to eat more mindlessly in front of the TV. We also don't taste and experience the food as much because we are distracted. This means we need more to satisfy us. Obviously, we use the word TV loosely here. We mean any video content. We're also exposed to more adverts online and on TV. Results across 53 different studies have shown that television viewing was strongly associated with high consumption of energy-dense snacks, drinks, and fast foods, and a low consumption of fruits and vegetables. So, if you want to stop eating as much, start by switching off the TV and sitting at the table. We always value your support. Remember to subscribe for more videos, and thanks for the thumbs up.